So really today in our session together, um, we're gonna work on answering two questions or coming pretty close to trying to answer two questions. And the first one, why is breakfast considered the most important meal of the day? And then how do we overcome barriers to skipping breakfast? And we're gonna focus on particularly one barrier um, and do some hands-on um, cooking uh, today in this virtual series in that. So my first question is you, for you is, um, why do you think adults skip breakfast? So I'm gonna encourage you to go ahead and unmute. Um, I would love for this to be interactive. We're not, we're not a huge group. And so if you wanna mm -hmm. feel comfortable putting your video on, you don't have to, but if you wanna unmute, if you don't wanna do that, you can type in chat too. And Carrie will watch that for us and, and give us some input. So what are some reasons why you think adults skip breakfast? Hi. Time constraints, having to get to work and stuff. Excellent. So time, definitely. That's probably the number one thing we hear. Any other thoughts? Not planning ahead with the menu to have um, practical foods on hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just having, you know, um, foods on hand. Excellent. In the chat, Kim says just being too busy. Elena says fasting. <laughs> Rachel says... Um, because they don't want to be late to work. Excellent. Those, these are, are some of the top ones that we have found is, um, I hear quite a bit, I'm not really hungry early in the morning. I don't want to eat early in the mor morning. Some people just don't like some of our traditional breakfast foods. Um, time is a huge issue. We hear that a lot. Um, managing weight. A lot of people believe that um, they can um, save calories by skipping breakfast. And then um, some people say, well, I just forget. I get busy and I forget. So those are reasons why adults skip breakfast. What do you think are some of the reasons that kids might skip breakfast? In our case, we have two kids that have anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis to anything dairy and eggs. So they're probably not going to be doing omelet on the go with us. Right. In that. Yes. Unless there's a clever substitute. Um, probably not, but there will, I'm going to be asking here in just a little bit other ideas of breakfast items um, that might uh, be good on the go as well. So we'll, we'll share a little bit there. Um, Joey, one of the things, this is Elena. One of the reasons I know my son will skip breakfast, especially at school, is because he's too excited and he wants to get to recess. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, definitely. I love that you shared about the excited with recess. Some schools have looked at flip-flopping like lunchtime and recess. Um, so they have recess first and then eat lunch in that. There's some research behind why that's good for kids. But some of the reasons that, that kids tell us and teachers and professionals share with us is that a child might say, I'm just not hungry, so I'm not going to eat breakfast. They also have pretty busy schedules in the morning in that. Um, they might not be seeing a parent eat breakfast, that role modeling. Um, there might not be food in the house or money in the house um, for breakfast in that. And then sometimes our early start to our school day and what time buses, sometimes buses are picking up, you know, six in the morning, 5.30 in the morning in that. So that makes it difficult um, to, to make breakfast happen. So why should we be eating breakfast? What are some of the benefits to eating breakfast? And so one of the, the um, all of these are evidence-based, um, reasons or benefits to eating breakfast and that includes really boosting that brain power. So we know that when people eat breakfast uh, that can improve your memory and your concentration, your problem solving ability. If you're a youth, youth who eat breakfast um, have better test scores than that. So it really can impact our um, brain. It's also an important time to get some essential nutrients so protein, fiber, whole grains, vitamins, minerals. You know, if you're having oranges or orange juice in the, in the morning, you're gonna be adding that vitamin C to that. Um, we know that many of our youth and adults don't get enough fiber throughout the day. 
Um, and breakfast tends to be a great place to eat whole grains. And then there's also evidence that by eating breakfast, it actually helps you maintain weight. We hear a lot of people say, um, I'm gonna skip breakfast so I'll get less calories. Um, but research has showed us that often when people skip breakfast, they end up eating more calories throughout the day than if they ate that breakfast and had those calories in that. And then also it really is um, starts your metabolism and provides you with energy in that. So most uh, dietitians recommend eating something within two hours of getting up. Some dietitians will tell you within an hour of getting up, even if it's a small amount in that. So a few weeks ago, um, some of you may have been on one of my colleagues, uh, you and I together series about healthy snacks, and she introduced the my plate in that. But really, we're working to encourage families to feed their children and their families a rainbow. And that just means getting a variety of colors within your meal, so lots of fruits and vegetables in that, as well as lots of variety in that. So I just want to reinforce that, you know, looking at my plate and seeing what you're eating is super important in that. Half your, half your plate should be fruits and vegetables, a quarter, a little more than a quarter, whole grains and whole grains, um, protein and dairy. So when thinking about breakfast, and one of our participants uh, mentioned this, uh, they said, you know, really one of the things, reasons I don't eat breakfast is planning. So um, investing time to save time becomes important, especially with breakfast, because one of the major barriers people will share is the time in that. So if you invest in planning and preparing um, in the long run, it could save you time and allow you to eat breakfast. So when you're planning and preparing, involve your family in that. Ask them what they like to eat. If you're prepping foods, include them in that cooking process in that. Make sure you have grocery items or breakfast items on your grocery list in that. I think someone mentioned that um, as well. And then identify foods that can be made ahead of time. So here in just a bit, we're gonna do a grab and go omelet in that. Um, but there are other ideas out there. Does anyone want to share some ideas maybe that they're already doing or that they've heard about? What are some of your favorite, favorite make ahead items? Kim says having fruit at the ready. Elena says breakfast burritos. I can share a personal one of we do steel cut oats in a slow cooker overnight and put it on the timer for the morning. So the, the, the steel cut oats start cooking, you know, before we get up and then when they're ready when we get up and they're just so yummy in the slow cooker. Um, April says egg bites, yum. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm already salivating here. <laughs> we make peanut butter granola bars. Ooh, that sounds really good. And they're getting whole grains um, in the morning, your peanut butter with the protein and some healthy fats in there. That's excellent. We had different yep. fruits, dried fruits, different things like that to it. Kim has uh, backups of granola bars or dry cereal that can be munched on with a glass of water, juice, or milk. We've got Greek yogurt with oatmeal, nuts, berries, and honey. Ooh, all oh. of that sounds lovely. It does sound lovely, all excellent ideas. Um, and then also kind of a couple, just a couple last things about investing time to save time. You know, if you're gonna pack an on the go breakfast item, you know, consider doing it the night before so that when things maybe don't go the way you plan them to in the morning, you can still grab, grab something pretty fast in that. Um, one suggestion that a family had made in, a, in another class was they actually set the table the night before in that so that they're encouraged to sit down together and eat breakfast in that. So those are just some basics about, uh, you know, kind of background, answering some of those questions. And so uh, I'm going to share with you grab and go omelet cups recipe in that. Um, can anyone share if they're actually going to try and do this 
with me. Might be a little bit hard to do some of it. And if not, that's okay. Even if you do it later, we still would love to see pictures of it and to share that with us. Um, so part of um, the, the information that you should have received is the recipe for grab and go omelet cups. I am going to stop sharing the PowerPoint. We've got some people that are gonna make these right after class and then others promising to make them later. <laughs> Excellent, I love hearing that. I actually wasn't planning on making it, but I, as I looked at the list you put up, I have all of those things and I indeed need to have breakfast prepared ahead of time and so, um, I will bake some tonight. I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, look at that, that's neat. All right. So you are actually seeing my desktop. Um, this, and we're gonna be making some um, omelet cups in that. So our um, recipe tells us that we have about 10 minutes prep time. Our cook time is 20 minutes. And it says a serving of six, but I actually believe there's more servings than that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, I know, I believe from our doodle, excuse me, from our poll, and that we have a couple of kids on board. And so I wanna ask, what is the first thing you do when you start cooking? It's the number one thing in the recipe listed as well. Gotta figure out where my camera is here. You would definitely want to wash your hands in that. <laughs> All right, so after we wash our hands, then we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. And we are going to get our muffin tin. We are going to spray our muffin tin, which is some non um, um, nonstick spray within that. I'm not going to actually spray it when I do it um, at home. I actually kind of set my muffin tin in the sink and spray it. She'll get a little bit of overspray and that'll help you clean up a little bit. So we're going to set our muffin tin, our sprayed muffin tin aside in that. And then in a medium bowl, we're going to crack some eggs in that. So if you have um, one of your children or grandchildren with you and you're doing this recipe, um, Having them crack eggs is a great skill to learn in that. Would you wanna go ahead and crack all the eggs into one bowl? You could have them do that, but most likely it's pretty normal for any of us, but particularly a child to get a shell in the egg. So having them crack it in a separate bowl and then put it in a big bowl makes it easier if they do get shell to get it out. So I've got 11 eggs in here. I'm gonna add my 12th egg in that. And then our recipe tells us a quarter cup of milk. So you can talk to your um, child a little bit about measuring cups and using a liquid measuring cup to give you a more accurate measurement when you're measuring liquids um, versus a dry measuring cup that you would use things like flour and sugar in. So we're gonna put that in there, put our milk into our eggs. We're gonna whisk it. Mixing all of the egg yolks and the egg whites. You can add salt and pepper to your egg mixture. I would keep mixing that a little bit, but I am gonna set it aside for just a bit. And then this is the fun part. This is the part where um, 
you get to decide what goes in to your omelet in that. So you can try some different things. I've been working on trying to say, gosh, could I get a rainbow into my omelet cup in that? Um, so I've got a couple of different colors of peppers. We're gonna use um, bacon today, but you could use ham in that. I'm gonna use a little bit of cheese. I've got some chopped up spinach. You can um, go ahead and chop up. Like if you cut the pepper, you could, your child, depending on their age, can help to seed it and get some of those veins up. I think the omelets turn out a little bit better if they're fi finely diced in that. So then in your sprayed muffin tin and with clean washed hands, you are gonna put just a little bit of whatever products you like, what your family likes, into that muffin tin in that. So I like peppers. Some kids, we have to remember their taste buds are a little bit stronger than ours and they can taste that. Um, I love spinach. I'm gonna put some spinach in each of those and then cheese. Just a little bit of cheese. And so it says to fill the muffin tins about um, anywhere from a quarter to a half with whatever product you want. And then you're going to fill those muffin tins about half to three quarters full. That and I, I would probably put, I've made a couple batches. I put a little bit more in there. And then you would do that throughout your whole muffin tin. I'm going to leave those chopped veggies out. Once that's done, you'll put it in the oven for uh, 20 minutes in that. Um, Take them out of the oven. And you're going to have your to go egg cups in that. So, this is the same recipe I just showed you, all the same ingredients in that. Then you can also freeze them. They actually freeze pretty well in that. So, I also did some, let's see if I got them in the bag so you can kind of see them some little mini ones too, not. So basically one of these um, in a regular muffin tin is about one egg each. If you use a mini muffin tin, about two of them equals one egg. Not. So what could you add to your on the go omelet? to make it more complete, to meet the uh, my plate. So what could you add to that, that to-go omelet? Blueberry muffins. What was that? A blueberry heard... muffin. Oh, blueberry muffin, I heard it. Excellent, yes. Blueberries, lots of antioxidants, super healthy for you. I was gonna say some maybe yogurt. Excellent, get some, some dairy in there. I think, <laughs> show, um, grab a banana. I think someone said they have lots of just whole fruit around that they can grab and go, which is a wonderful thing. Right, just got a couple slides left. We have a couple minutes. Real quick, Joey, while we're on that topic, why do you, uh, Stephanie's wondering, why do you put in your veggies or meat before the eggs? Yeah, um, they have you do that because to get kind of even amounts throughout. And then those cups are so little that it becomes hard once you got the eggs in, you kind of have to like poke them down in there. And so that's why you would put those in first and then just add your egg mixture on top of that. 
So any quick questions? Any additional quick questions? And also Irma says, thanks for the usable info. I was glad to learn that cooked egg cups can be frozen, which is, yeah, super useful. To, you can make a bunch of them, put them in the freezer. Yes. Um, all you have to do is put them in a heavy Ziploc freezer bag, throw them in there. I originally put them all in one, and then I thought, oh, when I thaw them, food safety-wise, I want to be sure and thaw them in the refrigerator. So pull them out the night before and um, put them in a little more individual sized. And that those are the little mini ones. In that. Oh, no, yeah, you got it. How long are they last in the freezer or fridge? You're on. <laughs> yeah. They hold up pretty, pretty well in that. Um, so I have, um, um, I would say easily three months in the freezer, in the refrigerator, um, you know, take a, um, a day to thawing, depending on what size they are in that. And then I would say to use them up within four days um, once they're thawed. While we're waiting for more questions to come in or comments just a reminder that we have both the survey link in the chat as well as the you and I together website so you can see other upcoming classes or get more information and with dates and then if you do make this and you want to make the a cups and send a picture and for some prizes you can email those to Nick Uzabel at uidaho.edu and that's also in the chat there for you. I'll stay on for a few more minutes if anyone has any additional questions, but we want to be really mindful of your time that this series is 30 minutes, just a little bite out of your day to hopefully inspire you to eat breakfast with that. Did you say this makes one dozen of these egg cups? Yes. So the, I guess you're not going to be able to see it because I took off my regular so the regular muffin tin, um, yep. Okay. Dozen, and they are, I'm gonna go ahead and lift one of these up so you can see that. Yeah. And if, if we make the mini ones, how long did you bake those for? Uh, the same amount of time. Oh, wow. I was surprised a little bit by that. I thought I would have to adjust, adjust the time yeah. in that, but nope, it was uh, 20 minutes and it made 24 of them exactly. Yeah. I thought it might be a little bit hard to get, you know, my filling and stuff because I'm like, oh, just a half of a little mini cup. Yeah, they turned out way better than I even thought they would. Um, really cute. Yep. Yeah, that's fun because then you don't need a knife and fork. You can just pop it in your mouth. Yep, you're driving and just yeah, off, <laughs> off you go. I probably shouldn't be encouraging you eating in your car, but yeah, <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. Yes. Yeah. That's fun. I'm going to try this. I'm going to make it for a, my group at work too. Excellent. I am um, trying some with mushrooms and some different, different food items. So it's really whatever you like. I kind of thought, uh, I think the recipe calls for like green onions in there and um, peppers and things like that. Like I said, let kids choose and let them see if they can come up with their rainbow. I also thought, especially with people with gardens, I had it on the tray, but it might have been hard to see. Zucchini, I don't think it has a lot of flavor and where kids can really taste bitter compounds. I'm like, oh, zucchini is a fun thing. And you could have them great zucchini or you can have them dice it and chop it up um, in that. So if you're gonna do this with your kids, there are some, um, they're actually plastic knives, not like the just the little, table knives in that but actually for kids to use they're a little bit safer and you can teach them you know to make the claw so that they can protect their fingers in that and um yeah great way to get kids in the kitchen and cooking together and we know that when kids cook they're more likely to eat what they make in that so getting those those vegetables in is a great way in the morning Although my nephews informed me that no way on tomatoes in his eggs. He would, he would do the zucchini, but not the tomatoes. Joey, my son watched you do um, prepare the egg um, cups. And so we, we're gonna do that tonight. 
Oh, and, he, and he thought it was interesting that children's taste buds are stronger than adults. <laughs> so he wanted me to let you know. Excellent. I love hearing that. And RJ, um, that just means you get to try lots of different vegetables, right? Yeah, see we'll, we'll see like. how that goes over. We'll see how that goes over. All right. Happy cooking, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and close out the session.